What's up, guys? Welcome to DeFi Top Signal. You got me, your host, Drake, and then you also got the other host, Abs. Abs, <laughs> dude, hit, up, hit us with some TA, man. What you got? Guys, I'm very, very excited about what I've what I've uh, noticed yesterday. Um, so looking at, just off the top, looking at the DXY, it's, it's actually kind of bearish uh, still from where it rejected from the 105. Um, DXY, we talked about this before in the past uh, couple episodes. Um, Basically, it's uh, it's just like a reflective of the U.S. dollar index. Um, so that's kind of retracing at this point, but we are we are at currently a pivotal area where it could uh, bounce. Um, but we did see some nice uh, price movement across the board with Bitcoin and, uh, and and crypto across the board. So so I wanted to kind of briefly talk about one uh, specific um, chart, and it's really the total two now. For the folks that don't know what uh, the totals are and basically what what this really means is that there's three different charts you kind of need to understand. There's a total, right, which is basically the entire crypto total market cap, uh, and then the total two, which is the uh, the crypto market cap, but it excludes BTC market cap. So you basically just understand you you have the ETH leading the way, and then the rest of the uh, like the top 200 market cap tokens. Uh, and then basically the, the, the total three is um, excluding BTC and ETH. So um, that's that's how um, the, I read the total, total two, and then total three. Specifically, I want to talk about is the total two. Now, I made a tweet about this uh, this morning, and the total two is currently at $601, $602 billion. Um, what I am seeing is that I, I typically watch the weekly and the monthly charts because um, that's that you know looking at the macro, you then tend to find uh, better price movements, pr better momentum rather than become a day trader. I'd rather I'd rather buy tokens at a, an optimal price, and then you know I would swing that over the course of potentially three to six uh, months or even a year. Uh, I've made the most money um, in crypto investing when it comes to just buying it and holding it right um i do plan on taking profits right but the idea here is that you want to if this if the price point breaks above this current resistance which i'm seeing around the total two to be around 618 615 area um given that that's like the recent um the resistance ab above i i see that this potentially is uh very bullish for all of crypto I don't know how we got to this point, but it's about time, right? Because we've been waiting for you know over a year, almost a year and a half since the the previous bull cycle popped. Um, uh, so the the pattern I wanted to kind of call out is it's called a cup and handle. Now, if you guys don't know what a cup and handle cup and handle is, no, it's not a cup of noodles. It's cup and cup and handle, right? <laughs> it's like a, it looks like a teacup. So it's like a cup, and then it goes up, and it kind of makes like a handle uh, pattern to the right, and it's. It looks very bullish. All the signs are basically pointing to the upside. And again, TA is not to uh, predict the future. It's really to add additional percentage points um, on your side to increase your chances of a uh, more educated guess, right? When you when it comes to investments. So if this price point breaks again above the six hundred and fifteen, six hundred and eighteen billion dollar. Um, range for the total two, and it, it confirms it on the weekly and the monthly charts. This is this is Moon Mission. We are we are going to see uh, crypto back into the bull cycle potentially, and this is like the first start of me seeing um, of a, a nice little spark to this this big potential run. What about volume? Do you look at volume any? Because I um, like just looking at the Bitcoin chart. Maybe it, oh, I guess this is because it's in uh, BUSD. The volume looks horrible. Let me look at it in USDT. Yeah, yeah the volume look, the volume yeah. looks much less than like back in March of March twenty first. Well, not back in that was like a week ago when we ran up to twenty eight. Then the volume looks so much stronger than it is now. Does that have any validity to it? Are you looking at the weekly, the daily? What's what time frames you looking? I'm at? on the one hour. Um, oh, you can. Oh. I guess you can go on the four hour too if you want. So Four typically, hour, the volume is so much weaker. 
So typically, the higher time frames would confirm that. So smaller time frames, I don't look anything below the four hour to make any judgments on investments. When when it comes to um, day traders, yeah, day traders would typically look at the one hour and and less, right? They would look at the fifteen minute or the five minute. Um, if you're looking at like a weekly hold, typically that's around the one hour to like the two to four hour range charts. Um, it could be a misnomer. I, I find that um, you can basically s- sleep sound when you're looking at the higher time frames because it's it's less stress. And uh, I think there's a saying out there that's less stress and more success if you look at the weeklies, the dailies, and then anything above the daily, right? So that that's potentially the the positive aspect of it. Um, obviously, you know when you were investing in this type of stuff, price volatility just would wreck you. It would destroy leverage folks. It would destroy day traders. Um, you have conviction in the one hour, or two hour, but then typically the the daily would would uh, would you know basically I would say supersede that if that's the correct word. Um, it, it would it would basically destroy everything that's below the you know the four hour and below. Daily, weeklies, and monthlies is what I typically look at. And if this longer time frame is going to be, you know, confirmed, uh, either if I, if I look at the weekly on this, um, it looks very bullish. Uh, if it if there is continuation to this, I, I can't wait until another two weeks for the weekly to confirm, um, and then the monthly. So if the monthly breaks through now in the next what two days given that this is the 29th of march we could see fireworks in the in the ensuing months but i'm going to be safe here and say that if the monthly charts confirm on the end of april and if we break through that from there on anything i purchase right now until the end of next month would typically be a a nice low entry into any of the cryptos right because when the total two goes off that means all of crypto would would trigger. Hey, it's time to buy, and we're going to go to the moon, right? Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm just curious why the volume is so much lower, though. Like, if you look at it uh, on the chart, uh, one, one hour. So, you said? like on four hour, I'm on four hour. Okay, so four hour, one hour, same thing. Um, the the, the uh, volume is so much lower. So back on three fourteen to let's call it three twenty one on our run up. Our average volume was at least like 100k Bitcoin. Right now we're trading around, what is that, 10, 15k average Bitcoin? So significantly less, um, like a lot less volume. Um, and, and some people, what they say is like if a uh, move is not uh, powered by volume or driven volume driven, it's typically not a good sign. Mm-hmm. But or not not that it's not a good sign but that it's a weak sign uh so like there's not strength in the market i i don't know I, i'm just looking at it um the chart looks bullish like it looks like we can keep going as long as we can break it but i'm just looking at that the volume i'm like man yeah maybe so- it's just because binance and btc usdt pair but typically it gets a lot of volume they do they do and, and you're right i mean most of the time it's it's that that's typically the case um but we we actually confirmed a, a big breakout on the daily weekly when it comes to the uh, the huge su- support and resistance areas right now. That that's that resistance. The previous resistance was at twenty five uh, four hundred. We took a long time breaking that level. So once we broke that, we are well above that at this point. I'm looking at that particular major level. When I say major, I'm talking about the weekly and the monthly. If that falls underneath, if the price of Bitcoin falls underneath 25400 area, right, give or take a hundred, a couple hundred dollars, then then that basically invalidates this whole bullish idea. Got it. Makes yeah. sense. So yeah, that's uh that's a brief TA. I I I, put, I tweeted about it this morning. So uh, be sure to follow me on that. Um. And uh, let's see if I'm right. <laughs> uh, I'm just cr- increasing probabilities. That, that's what TA is all about. Um, and as every single day and every single second goes by, more data is being compiled. So, you know, I could be wrong here and have this conviction now. But once the monthly closes in about two days, we could see a different change in sentiment uh, in my tone in the next couple <laughs> couple episodes. But, yep, that's where we yeah, are. T- oh. TA, TA is just over my head. Let's talk about what's something that... Uh, let's, let's talk about what everyone wants to hear airdrops yeah yes yeah, airdrop, airdrop season dude. right airdrop season so, what, are you, what are you looking at for airdrop wise 
Oh, there's a there's a lot um, that's actually in the works. I've solidified uh, and made a couple transactions on 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 these chains. So off the top, we have, and this is no particular order whatsoever. Uh, we have Starknet, we have zk sync, we have Lens Protocol, we have Layer Zero, and we also have Consensus zk EVM. Um, you guys might not have heard of uh, Consensus uh, zk EVM. I only heard about this just yesterday, but um, apparently. Z, uh, consensus zk evm received a investment of 725 million dollars and it, it just has its testnet at this point in time so they have a lot of capital to provide to the dev team and to make this work now consensus is a very uh you know household name when it comes to the folks that are in crypto right because when you hear of consensus you also tie it with metamask um and that's that's what you you get to you you, you understand that too, right, Drake? Um, MetaMask uh, was made from consensus. Yeah, yeah. Some people okay. say make us make a couple swaps, and then I made a couple swaps, but I, I don't do it anymore. Too much fees, <laughs> man. Yeah, for sure. But but yeah, if you there's a there's plenty plenty of of uh, of big opportunities here for farming um, when it comes to farming airdrops. A lot of folks that I've read on on crypto Twitter, they've made a lot of money just doing this, focusing on airdrops, focusing on newer platforms with test nets. When they go live, you can play around, make a couple swaps, add add your liquidity, and just let it go. You should be good, right? Uh, and if they have a guild dot you know X Y Z, then 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 do a couple of those quests uh, within that website. But otherwise, um, you know, if you want to make sure you get to these uh, these snapshots. Make sure you get into these things and make sure you read up on some of these threads that are out there uh, on crypto Twitter. Uh, there's a bunch of a bunch of things out there that you can kind of follow and make a couple swaps. They have links um, and, you know, have fun with it and see if you can get any type of airdrop. Because I've heard a lot of folks are very you can make a lot of money doing this in a year. I've heard of six figures. If you just focus on one thing of crypto and Web3, it's literally this is one little sector where you just focus on airdrops and it doesn't have to be this big. These are all looks like it's, it's, these are all like, you know, ZK, uh, the narrative, right. And these are new up and coming, um, exciting L ones. And, um, this is, you know, this is the, <laughs> this is the spot where people make a, a lot of money and, you know, you can make five figures on the, on the low end. And we've seen that with, uh, with this recent airdrop of Arbitrum. Yeah. Um, in regards to uh, airdrop farming, there there are, I mean, in general, uh, what you can do is you can actually go on DeFi Llama and check out the different protocols that are built on each chain, like on Starknet, on ZK Swap, or, or not ZK Swap, but ZK Sync. Um, and uh, Lens Protocol is another one that's uh, potentially airdropping. It's basically an NFT um, that it's kind of like Facebook, uh, in order to have an account with uh, Lens Pro uh, Lens Protocol, you have to have one of these NFTs in your wallet. There's only like a hundred thousand or a hundred ten thousand. I remember making a video on this. Uh, what was it like? I don't know, seven eight months ago, or maybe it was seven months ago. It was airdropping, airdrop farming uh, at that time, and it was like trading maybe twenty bucks at the time, and now it's thinking point one three ETH or about. 250 bucks so i i don't know i mean it could keep going uh but i mean there's there are a lot of the uh there's there's 115,000 of these items um which are these profile picks and in my opinion most people are getting them uh to airdrop farm so i think once the airdrop is released or there's an announcement and the snapshot is done it will probably <laughs> dump because yeah. that's that's kind of what you're you're barking at and playing with. I don't, me personally, I don't think the risk reward is worth it now. Now that it's at 0.13 ETH, uh, I think there are better plays in the market that you can make. Um, but if this does come back down like to 0.05 ETH um, or maybe like 0.04, I might buy a couple more. Um, but other than that, it's, I, I think the play is already made. I mean, I, I've used Lens and I've tried a couple of the um, dApps that they have. Between me and you, it's it's not anything fun. <laughs> but I, I was never fond of using Facebook anyways. Um, but over at StarkNet, StarkNet, there are a couple of swappers. You got SysSwap, JediSwap, MySwap, 10KSwap. Boring junk. Uh, StarkNet takes like 
10 hours for a stinking transaction. It's not fun at all. I don't like StarkNet. However, I do like ZK Sync. ZK Sync is pretty interesting. And they also just dropped a farm for Space Swap. Uh, this is a Ponzi farm. So uh, it's probably going to go to zero pretty quick. But it's kind of like RV9 uh, over on Arbitrum when it launched on a long time ago. Um, they ended up, I think they rug pulled. Um, I'm not saying space is a rug pull. Uh, space is, uh, I'm just trying to give you an example. Like, this is not a long term hold. This is something that you do some transactions, you farm with, and you get wrecked, and then maybe the airdrop will compensate you for it. Um, it it's like a get in, get out, where uh, it's, we were kind of discussing this last week. I can't remember which farm it was, um, but we were talking about one of the farms. And basically, how this works is, uh, one of the LP pairs, it pays like 6,800% right now, is space and USDC. Um, so you're basically having to buy the space token to earn some of these rewards in the LP, which creates buy pressure, increasing the APRs, and then this entices more people to hop in, yada, 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 you get the game, that's it. <laughs> we talked about this with the Arbitrum Exchange, I think that was it. <laughs> yeah, Arbex, how's that thing yeah. doing? That thing's probably popping off still. I haven't um, taken a look at the the price actually, but the TVL is actually uh, it, it decreased uh, around eleven million. Oh geez, it's got the death spiral starting. It went is from one forty two mil to one thirty one. I guarantee this price is starting to come down. Arcs, mm -hmm. boom, there it is. Its peak <laughs> was um, eleven bucks or no thirteen bucks, and now it's going. It, it only went down like. 3% in, uh, or no, it's like 4% in TVL, but the price, <laughs> the price peaked out. It went from uh, 13 bucks, 12 bucks, all the way down to seven bucks, a drastic decrease. So how these farms work is they always front run the TVL. So if the TVL start, well, the price always front runs it. So if the TVL starts to settle out and starts to somewhat peak, your, your token price is just going to dump. And I, I noticed this with a lot of the VE three three forks. Um, one that is actually uh, I'm kind of going off topic, um, but we kind of went over the airdrops. Just just use some of the farms, playing around with them, uh, use the chains, lose a little bit of money here and there. Um, don't spend a lot. Spend like twenty bucks, ten bucks. We call it coffee money. Maybe mm -hmm. you'll get an airdrop. Maybe you won't. But hey, if you do, great. If you don't, whatever. You just don't have coffee. You yeah, tried. You tried. <laughs> um, one of one uh, TVL chart that looks really good is Camelot and Grail. Mm. Um, it looks like it consolidated for a bit, but it could be taking another trend up. The reason why I like uh, Camelot and Grail is because you're still having a lot of not a lot, but you're still seeing inflows coming into Arbitrum. It's now at two point two two billion dollars in TVL, and you really any of these DeFi protocols, you have to look at them like a Ponzi. It doesn't matter what it is, even with Bitcoin, Ethereum, anything. You have to look at, even with stocks, you have to look at them like a Ponzi. If there's not going to be someone else buying into um, that token or that project, you can't expect the number to go up. That's if you're buying the coin. Now, if you're just out there just farming, siphoning the yield, then who cares at that point? Just look for the highest yield with something that's not going to rug pull with the least risk of impermanent loss, have some fun. Um, but just make sure you manage your risk accordingly and uh, don't, um, don't place all your bets in uh, one pool because uh, there is always that chance that there is either um, a hack, an issue, a rug pull, mm -hmm. uh, just different things that can happen. Uh, just two examples for me, um, Lodestar Finance, I lent out some magic tokens on there just chasing after yield, seeing what would happen. I don't know, like a week later, funds were hacked, stolen. And I was like, great. I'm glad I didn't throw my full magic bag in there because this, at the time when the magic was hacked, magic was trading around 30, 40 cents. And I farmed a big bag of it and ended up ripping to like two bucks. So instead of just like a, a minuscule loss that it seemed like, it actually ended up being much larger because I missed out on the opportunity cost of price appreciation. Another example is ThorChain. Um, on ThorChain with the UST DPEG, the pools and uh, the chain was basically frozen with that. And I had UST stuck in the pool. 
And basically, I had to write out the uh, drawdown. Now, what I could have done is hedge my position by going on an exchange and shorting UST. But instead, I just froze up and I didn't do anything. But the point is, is I had a large position of UST on there and I wasn't able to manage risk because the funds were frozen. When you're in DeFi, you have to understand the risks that you're taking on and always diversify and always have them in different pools. If not, you'll just learn and you'll be roasted and hopefully it's not going to uh, get you out of the game. Yeah, I was actually looking at Thorchain as well. I didn't actually buy a bag of that or you know provide liquidity on that chain, but um, it looked really interesting. Uh, but the only thing that actually deterred me from it, and I'm I'm no dev, right? I'm no I'm no developer, or I know anything about code. Um, but I've dug into you know EtherScan, and I've dug into all of these types of scans across the board. Uh, what was concerning with Thorchain was that it it literally only had about two hundred lines of code. And I think the typical, um, the, the average lines of code that uh, would run a, a blockchain, and take this with a grain of salt because I'm just, I haven't looked into this for many, like probably two years now, but I think the typical is probably two or three X of that 200 lines of code that Thorchain had. So was it that easy to build a, a, a layer one and just call it Thorchain? Potentially. I think, I think it's got uh, more lines of code than that. Actually, uh, significantly more. Um, Thorchain, mean, isn't, Thorchain isn't a chain, really. It is a chain, but it's not. It, it's um, built on Cosmos, uh, Tendermint technology. Gotcha, um, gotcha, yeah. And basically what Thorchain does is it allows you to swap native assets. So... If I have some native Bitcoin, I can swap this for native ETH going through Thorchain. The code is actually extremely complex, uh, hence why there, in way back in the past, um, there were uh, some hacks, not hacks like on purpose. It was basically just exploits that happened with uh, people exploiting the code. But I would recommend uh, taking a look at it and actually using it, uh, swapping some native Bitcoin to native Litecoin or some ETH. Um, I, I really like Thorchain. I, I like what they're doing. Uh, they have um, some very disruptive technology, especially for the crypto space. Uh, Eric Voorhees is pretty adamant about them. He likes them as well. Um, he actually integrates them through his Shapeshift platform. But the reason why is something like Thorchain is extremely important for the crypto space is it's because it's basically the only DEX that is allowing you to be able to swap between native assets with other native assets. Now you can do that on Ethereum, like you can swap um, some ERC-20s with each other, but once you enter or try to swap Bitcoin for ETH, at that point you have to use this wrapped trash. And you know what happens when you have something like, I don't know, wrapped Bitcoin, sold BTC, you know, sold BTC, steady lads, it's trading at like 500 bucks now, uh, instead <laughs> of what, $28,000 or $28, for Bitcoin. Because it was centralized trash. I, I want the native stuff. Even like rap Bitcoin, it, it depegged at one point because there was FUD around yep. BitGo and all kinds of garbage. But the point is, is if you're relying on a centralized party, just go to the banks. They'll do that for you. You're in crypto to get out of uh, centralization. It's the same thing with stable coins. Like I, I don't like USDT. I don't like USDC. I don't like BUSD. I don't like the centralized stables. And that was a huge sign for me, especially with the USDC DPEG. I've made a couple videos on it. And the only reason why I had exposure on it is because most of DeFi has a USDC in the LP pools. Now, it was great because most of the USDC I had was just borrowed. So I was like, cool, my debt's going down, whatever. But it's like, wow. Um, and the way I, I, I actually was able to profit from it is I just swapped the uh, USDC I had left to my, like I, I pulled out of the pool into a CDP stable. Um, and the reason why I chose my uh, over something like DAI is because it relies on more of a decentralized collateral. And it does have some USDC uh, exposure through the DAI stable coin. But other than that, that doesn't have any effect on it because the vaults will still liquidate if it's under the correct loan to value. It's not pegged to one USDC. It's pegged to one US dollar uh, or the vaults um, function based on that. 
So an example is if I have a thousand USDC and it becomes worth $900, my collateral is only 900 bucks. Um, when I say worth 900 is because it went to 90 cents. So at that point, uh, if I'm at a liquidation point, my vault would be liquidated and the my stable coin still has the proper collateral. Sorry to go on a rant. No, no, no. So on ThorChain, just kind of diving in, in here a little bit because it seems like you know a lot about it. I, I, so can you, so since you can trade ETH, which is an ERC20, and then BTC natively. Dude, I, I'm, I'm telling you, you got to try the, the try. It. It's, it's actually pretty good tech. Yeah, I looked at the. I think it was Thor Swap uh, in the past, and it yeah, looks really. Thor it looks pretty. Too. It looks pretty sleek to me. Um, what about BEP twenty? BEP. Uh, are you talking about BEP twenty or BEP yeah. two? No, BEP BEP twenty. I don't think there is BEP twenty integration because BEP twenty is Binance Smart Chain. Yeah. Um, BEP two is Binance Chain. So you have Binance Chain and Binance Smart Chain. So BEP2 is, is basically just the Binance Chain. Um, it is a chain that most people don't even really know about or use. Most oh, wait, BNB. Know... Yeah, it looks like you can trade BT, uh, BNB. Yeah, there. that's native BNB. Um, uh, BSC, okay. BSC is, I mean, it's technically native as well. Um, but Binance uh, has two chains. There's the BNB chain, which is, it's ultra fast and is dirt cheap. Like BSC, it's like 50 cents to 75 cents. Um, the BEP2 uh, chain, which is the one that most people don't even know or use, is it's lightning fast and it's dirt cheap. Like it's 0. 0.00002 BNB, a transaction. So it's a fraction of the cost of BSC. It's like a penny. So you would suggest for, for folks to use ThorSwap because that's the only one that I've actually kind of taken a look at. And Yeah, try it. Um, try, try the swaps and use it. Uh, ThorSwap is basically the main swapper. It actually does a lot of volume. Um, I, I like the Thor token as well. Right now it is semi-inflationary, but they're working on the uh, tokenomics. Or, uh, it's got revenue share coming as well. But using the DEX, it, it's just mind-blowing to me. Um, that it's not getting as much uh, traction as it should be, um, especially with the Thor yield, I think. No, not Thor yield. It's like um, earn, Thor earn or something. I can't even think of the word. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, you're able to uh, single stake assets. So if you wanted to earn a yield on just native Bitcoin, you can deposit into the pool uh in and won't have any impermanent loss um just based on the tech of how it's working um because on the other side you have people that are in the lp pools uh that are providing liquidity like single side or rune and and whatnot um but basically if you single stake uh bitcoin into the thor earn vault you aren't going to earn as high as you would in an lp pool but you also don't have impermanent loss um, I've made a couple of videos on it if any of the people listening want to go take a look at it. But the yields really aren't that bad. And the TLDR on what the market cap is for ThorChain or the Rune token is it's basically three to one. So if um, there is $100 million in TVL, the minimum, tr excuse me, the minimum trading price for it is going to be three times that. So it would be 300 uh, million in uh, market cap for the Rune token. And that's just basically uh, how the technology works. Because uh, in order to be a uh, node or run a node on ThorChain, you have to have um, 2x the value. So if the value is $1,000, then I have to have $2,000 in Rune in order to validate transactions. And then if you go in the LP pool, every single token is paired 50-50, and that's where the 3x comes from. You get one from the LP pool, and then you got two from the guy running the node. So if there's a billion dollars in TVL, then the minimum market cap of the Rune token has to be $3 billion, um, just based on the network security and how uh, it functions. And sometimes there is a speculative multiplier, like right now it's like trading at 3.3 or 3.4, so nothing crazy. But I remember in the peak of last bull market, it was like trading at 21 times <laughs> instead of three times. So it was. I remember was that. Kinda, 
was pumping. But yeah. the hacks really didn't help them a long time ago. Um, but the, the chain's doing really well and that they're holding up well. Um, volume, still pretty good. It's not anything to be like, well, this is the best volume ever. But for what they're offering, it, it, it's really good, um, especially for the native swaps. So, um, yeah, we can. Uh, we just had a huge tangent on Thorchain. That's that's solid stuff. It looks uh, and, and it looks like the, like the same. The last time I, I kind of was like kind of going around and clicking through Thorswap dot finance. It's interesting stuff, and uh, yeah, I have some BTC. Maybe I could. Uh... It's called Thor Earn. So yeah, I was right. Earn? So right now you can lend out some Bitcoin. The it's almost fully filled. There's eighty eight percent right now, but you can get three point four eight percent on native Bitcoin. 7.29 on ETH, um, 5.13 on BNB. So it looks like there's only two DApps that's on there right now Thorchain, Thorswap. And, you, and uh, the TVL is currently for the ecosystem is 118 million. Yeah. So, really, yeah, there's only two DApps on there. And the Rune token is basically going to be uh, like your Cosmos or your Atom token for the chain. But it has direct integration. Um, there, anyone can build their own decks on there. Uh, like you also have, uh, what is it called? Thor something. Um, there's, there's another one. I'm, I'm trying to think of the name. I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Thor, 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 uh, Thor Starter is another one on there. Thor Chain um, X. I can't even think of what it's called. It's something Thor, but it's basically another Dex as well. And oh, TGT, that's what it's called. TGT, yeah, Thor, uh, Thor wallet. So this is like the TGT token. I'm not extremely bullish on this one, but basically, it's a, a wallet you can download on your phone, and um, it's basically a, a UI for the uh, Thor chain protocol. So Thor chain, it doesn't matter where you provide liquidity; you can provide it on Thor Swap. You can provide it on um, on TGT, so Thor Wallet. It doesn't matter when you're providing liquidity; you're depositing it directly into the room um, or the Thor Chain liquidity system. You're just using different UIs in these tokens. Some of them will have revenue share with stakers, and others won't. So, like they basically just do an upcharge. It's similar to something like Li Liquidity uh, does to um, the, with their different front ends. Yeah, I'll definitely do a little deeper dive on that, man. It looks yeah, awesome. Yeah, check it out, man. Um, yeah, so moving along really quick, just in the markets, you've seen this, Drake, about Caspa and Nexa in the news, right? Have you seen these these just, these just tokens have just been popping off Pumping. over the last... Yeah, it's Pumping. insane. Dude, I it's faded Cass at uh, 0. 0.007. Kaduna was showing me on it. He was like, dude, you gotta buy this. And I was like, Yeah. I don't get it, dude. I don't so get it. For me, for me, I, I understand Caspa versus Nexa. I think these guys, th these projects move in unison. It's interesting. Um, and I actually just I faded Caspa too as well. And and I just I said, you know what? I think I think Caspa ran a good bit already. And I think Nexa. I, I based my decision <laughs> is next. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, it's. I think it's potential for Nexa to kind of go off because, and yeah, over the last week, it's been. It's. I think over the last twenty four hours, it's been up thirty two, thirty three percent, and insane gains under just twenty four hours. Um, but I purchased. So right now, the the price is at, and it's many many decimals at this point. Uh, point, it's point zero 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 one three six. Okay. Uh, one three six zero. So I would say it's thirteen hundred sixty is the is the price point of Nexa. Uh, the what I got into, uh, when I got into it, I bought it around four hundred because it was a new POW right proof of work type of project, same as Caspa. Um, but I the reason why I purchased, uh, <laughs> and I actually purchased from a very 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 low end exchange and i'm not going to explain you know it got hacked like and trade all ogre or something right oh dude it, it was it was actually expatron uh, ex what expatron what no one's ever heard of it but i don't know why these guys megatron up. <laughs> exactly yeah it's very very uh low bottom of the barrel type of exchange uh weeks later it was hacked and uh you know obviously it took all of my nexa tokens off the exchange 
Um, so I wasn't affected by that. Um, but I find that the this project has a little bit more legs and a little bit more room to run than than Caspa. Yes, Caspa has been going off. Let's take a look. Uh, so Caspa is over the last thirty I, I days. I don't even look anymore. My eyes hurt. <laughs> Caspa can't over the last thirty days. It, it's up two hundred and seventy percent. Uh, over the last seven days, it's up a hundred and ten percent. And over the last twenty four hours, up sixty percent. It's in, it's That's insane. Healthy. It, it's going off. Yeah, it's very healthy. This is actually the time where I think it would make sense to take profits. No, <laughs> um, but if you're a maxi in this, then most of the time maxis will hold forever. Uh, but yeah, I, I have a bag of Nex Nexa. I'm up about two and a half x, um, basically three x right now because I the the price I, I thought it was at twelve hundred earlier, but. Yeah, it's up 3x right now from where I initially bought into. I'm very happy with it. I think that this has legs because of two reasons. Uh, and there's many reasons behind it. But one reason being is that the team behind it is... Uh, the team is actually called... I'm not sure if you guys heard of this, but it's the team is called Bitcoin Unlimited. So it's an OG team. Uh, basically was formulated in 2015. They... Um, they did a bunch of dev work with, uh, B, you know, Bitcoin Cash. Um, there's some there's some FUD around around Nexa, uh, based on you know the copy pasta of the code. Um, I don't know if that's verified and confirmed, but uh, but the team is actually doing their. I don't know. They've been very very active in Telegram, and um, and and they're their discord as well so that's that's a bullish thing is that i I'm, I'm i invested into this this project mainly because of the team the og team the devs um they're all doxed uh they're they're sort of uh well known within the crypto space if you look up bitcoin unlimited or even nexa money on twitter you'll be able to get more information on that and the team behind that um, and then bullish case number two is that in the summertime is when the mainnet goes live for Nexa. And so everyone knows when the mainnet goes live, tokens will be, you know, used and there could potentially be a burning mechanism for it. Um, you know, there's going to be probably money sloshing around in the ecosystem. Eventually, dApps will go live. So when um, you say live, you mean the DeFi? Yes, yes. And that's for, uh, that's for Nexa, right? That's for Nexa, yeah. And what I did hear negatively about Caspa um, is that in 2026 20, is when uh, dApps are going to be able to build on top of this, which is what? years away. I don't know if that's true or not. I did hear this in a group chat. Um, and, that's doo -doo, uh, man. <laughs> that's, like, exactly. So why, why would you be bullish on... Uh, you know, Caspa, then you would be on Nexa. Um, yeah, there's only one thing you can be negative about. It's probably because they copied the code from from Bitcoin Cash or BTC. It's it's kind of like I don't know. If you can see my hands, I'm kind of like, eh, like I don't know. I I think that if I'm going to be a betting man on this, is it Caspa or is it Nexa? I picked Nexa, and I think that the the bullish case for this summer, when devs are going to kind of come to this space and potentially build on top of this L1. It's lightning fast. It's like instant if you ever used it. And I can try to, you know, if you want to. Nexa can... is or Cass? I Nexa saw Cass. is very I, bullish. Very, very I fast. I bought some, but I haven't even used it. I gotta go use it. Um, yeah, I mean, sending yeah. it back and forth to each other, it's, it's literally instant. Like, I, I, I did this with some of my friends and, and family, and I just said, hey, I'm going to send it right now. And they instantly received on their end. It was, it was lightning fast. Um, so yeah, if if you want to take a look at this, you can kind of do your own due diligence as well. Uh, Nexa versus uh, Caspa, and it's kind of like it, it, I feel like they kind of run in unison in terms of price action. So that's an interesting, you know, case so you can kind of notice. Another one thing that came out yesterday with Nexa is that there was a an announcement yesterday where they said that they're pleased to announce that Nexa was implemented on the cryptocurrency checkout platform, and people can use it to check out. On Twitch, they can check out on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Shopify, WordPress, WooCommerce. Uh, if you don't you don't know what um, uh, cryptocurrency checkout is, they have a bunch of partnered up, um, you know, uh, uh, companies that they partner up with, like YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and all that. You can check out by paying certain types of accepted cryptocurrencies, and there's a huge list. Right there's USDT, BTC, ETH, XRP, LTC, Doge, Bitcoin Cash, XMR, Mon Monero, Dash, 
Caspa's in here. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Flux is in here. And so there's a bunch of other ones. Very interesting stuff. I mean, if, if this, you know, if, if I can want, if I want to ever feel like going shopping, I have a couple million Nexa tokens that I could buy something with <laughs> down the line if I really feel like it. But it's, it, it's interesting that it was actually, this is like they're progressing. They're already on Mexi uh, exchange. And their, their next goal by the end of this year is to potentially be on KuCoin and like, you know, the top tier ones eventually, right? Maybe not this year, but I think it's in the pipeline for 2024. So I'm mainly bullish. The goal, the goals month. of a chain. Let's get listed on exchanges. <laughs> tier one exchanges, tier one exchanges. <laughs> that always just reminds me of the classic um, meme coin junk, but whatever. I, th- I mean, you, you can't fade it. I mean, if you yeah. fade it, it's just like, it, it hurts but whatever yeah. um yeah. I, I, it's like uh, people draw narratives on anything um mm-hmm. so it rolls welcome to crypto yes <laughs> <laughs> um uh, what else i want to i want to talk about uh one thing um on lsds and frax and then talk about a couple of other plays but frax and their frax eth uh staking is just popping off man um, it's listed as number four behind Lido, Rocket Pool, and what is Coinbase? Yeah, Lido, Coinbase, ETH, and Rocket Pool. So it's, technically, it's number three. I really wouldn't consider uh, Coinbase ETH decentralized at all. Um, it's just through Coinbase. Uh, but Lido, Rocket Pool, and ETH, those are the big three. Um, there is stake wise. Uh, I don't see Stakewise getting as much traction and growth as something like Frax ETH is. Uh, if you take a look at their chart, it's it's literally just exponential. Um, the growth of ETH, Rocket Pool is doing pretty well also. Um, but Frax uh, ETH, it's Frax ETH is basically just a branch off of what they do. They also have Frax Lend, they have Frax Swap. Um, they have, of course, Frax, the stable coin. And Sam kind of made a hint about this yesterday, uh, talking about Frax V3. And going through um, the telegram on uh, Frax Finance, uh, someone was asking about the stability mecha- mechanism for Frax as a stable coin itself. And he said, uh, the goal of Frax V3 is making Frax safer than before. It'll be pegged to USD like USD, like the dollar, and not USDC slash fiat coins. It'll be fully on-chain trustless governance and a lot more. We'll discuss in the near future. And someone else, of course, they were trolling. Not trolling, but they were like, is this Frax V3 bullish for FXS? Yes or no? Sam, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you, you have something like that for... Um, Frax and uh, FXS, I mean, and of course, the, the price ends up pumping. Um, of course, it's not like all-time highs, but it's up about 15 20%. Oh, actually, it's up 16% just for today. Um, but I'm extremely bullish on Frax, FXS. I've made several videos on them. I, I think they are basically the all-in-one DeFi suite. Um, they have their own, fra- they have Frax Lend, they have Frax Swap, they have Frax ETH. They have uh, Frax as a stable coin, basically uh, tying the whole entire protocol together. Uh, they basically own all of the governance, not all of the governance, but they own a massive uh, market share of a lot of these different DeFi protocols, uh, mainly predominantly uh, Curve through Convex because uh, they own a bunch of CVX. So they basically, uh, some people can kind of call them like the DeFi Mafia or like the Hidden Hand. Um, And the reason why it's called, or they aren't called Hidden Hand, but I would consider them uh, something like the Hidden Hand is because it's a hand. uh, I'm just explaining uh, why it's called this. They're able to move liquidity and move chains based on their governance power. Um, So it's kind of like a hidden hand because they're increasing the incentive someone can earn and it causes liquidity to uh, move where they want to direct it. Um, so, I mean, if they're like, hey, we need more liquidity on this pool, juice the APRs, more liquidity comes, that's it. They do that for uh, through their voting power that they have. Um, and you can actually farm with Frax, uh, the FXS stablecoin itself, or 
FXS token itself. Uh, you can use that on uh, Convex. Uh, you can farm with the CVX FXS as well as just FXS. And you can also simply stake it or you can LP with FXS and a stable coin. Um, there is FPI as well, but the reason why I didn't mention it as being part of FXS is because it has its own governance token, which is FPIS. Um, FPI is basically uh, a stable coin that is going based on um, CPI. So instead of just being pegged to a dollar, it's pegged to a basket of assets. And let's say you peg it to a burger, a gallon of gas, and a, a pizza or something, whatever. Uh, and if those prices increase in dollar value, the uh, stable coin in dollar terms is actually going to increase as well. So betting on FPI and FPIS, you're basically betting on inflation, which we all know inflation's pretty pricey right now. So instead of holding a stable coin, you can choose to hold FPI. And if there's ever any overflows, this actually um, benefits FPIS, which are the stakers. And um, staking has been enabled on that. And Convex even has their own little um, staking thing for that as well. Pays like 150% right now, 120%. So it's pretty good. Um, Massive. Yeah, I was, I was kind of going on a rant on LSDs. But my two favorite LSDs are uh, Frax because... If LSDs, I, I think they will be successful and I think they will have a bright future. But just in case they don't, I like Frax FXS because it has diversified exposure to other things as well. Just like a stable coin, their stable coin, I wouldn't say it goes down, um, but let's say people lose confidence in it, then there are other um, uh, narratives it has exposure to. Um, and I do like Rocket Pool, of course, uh, just basically on the decentralized infrastructure for someone else to run a node on ETH. It's much cheaper and it's more decentralized than something like Lido. So instead yes. of having to cough up like 16 or 32 ETH for your own node, you can actually, if you want to run your own as a validator, you can cough up the 16 and the other 16 comes from people who want to delegate. So, so the, the bankless guys, they were talking about when, when LSDs were kind of like a big thing about a month ago. Um, they were just obviously talking about the Shanghai upgrade and all that, uh, which is what's slated in middle of next month, probably two weeks now, right? Mm -hmm. um, they were talking about, you know, obviously they're bullish on LSDs and how it's like 13% of the ETH supply is going to be unlocked. Is that bullish bearish? Obviously, we know where that, you know, we're, we're all bullish on ETH. Everyone is. That's That's no... Um, that's not like a the question, right? <laughs> it's a matter yeah. of fact. Um, but they were saying that uh, yes, you know, Lido, Rocket Pool, and you know, Frax. But they did say something and plugged one of the smaller type of uh, Dgen LSD plays, and I think that they got into like an early round. Stake wise. Stake wise, exactly, exactly. So I don't know anything about that. I mean, I'm sure it's just another LSD platform. But if it if it uh, you know extinguishes itself. Or I guess distinguish yeah, it's itself. A farming, it's a farming coin. Is cool. it? Yeah. Uh, just like I, I don't. I mean, Lido is interesting uh, in the aspect that you have the governance power over all of the stake ETH that's through Lido, as we saw with something like um, Mango Markets, um, <laughs> and being Mango able to markets. vote and go through that. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't. I don't see it with Stakewise. Um, I, it just doesn't have it for me, at least. It doesn't have enough. Um, ETH into it, uh, and really in order to, or in, in really just for the token itself, like the only buy pressure on it is just, it, it's like a sophisticated Ponzi. Uh, mm -hmm. you just buy more of it and use it in order to uh, earn more yield. <laughs> or you simply just provide liquidity with the uh, liquid ETH and farm with it. It's the same thing with Lido. Yeah. The only use for Lido, it, it, it's a farming coin, but it created a additional narrative just based on having the first mover advantage and being able to amass all that staked ETH. Um, so that's really the biggest uh, narrative for Lido finance itself. Yeah, and worth something, something worth noting here is that Lido currently has a TVL of over $10 billion. That's massive. That's number one of all TLV... It, 
TVL rankings. That is massive. It's on five different chains. Lido is the king. Rockapool potentially has a little bit more firepower, but obviously, obviously these are very bullish. Just kind of like in yeah, that same Yeah, I mean, area. I think and have 6.22 million ETH, um, whereas Rocketpool has like, I don't know, 670. Uh, DeFi Llama slow. It's got uh, 600, almost 700 million or 700,000 ETH. Um, we already went over Frax ETH. They got like 130 million or 130,000 ETH. Stakewise, their ETH, they, in fact, Frax surpassed Stakewise. Stakewise used to be higher. They only have 93,000 ETH. And I mean, the thing is climbing, but it's, it's at a much slower rate. And the reason why Frax ETH is climbing at a much higher rate is because it's able to offer higher APRs uh, based on its little hidden hand thing. And it has a more of a sustainable yield, whereas Stakewise is just, hey, we're giving you an inflationary token. Instead, Frax is like, hey, look, we'll use our governance power to vote on the liquidity pool on Curve if you're wanting to provide liquidity with your uh, staked ETH into this pool and we'll give you rewards in uh, Curve Convex and whatever they're voting on uh, or, or whatever uh, voting <laughs> power they're using. And they're able to increase the um, staking APR for someone who's just like, I don't want to LP, I just want to stake it because they're actually splitting up the pools to where if you have 100% of the ETH simply staked, the maximum APR you can get is whatever ETH staking rate is at that time. It, let's say it's 5%, 6%. The most I can ever get is 5 or 6%. There's no changing that. However, if I throw in all that staked ETH and only half of it is staked, the APR is now double because all the inflation is only going to half of the people instead of all of them because they aren't all staked. So Frax splits it up into um, a staked token that needs to uh, not a stake token but a liquid staked eth which stays at one and if you want to earn a yield on it you need to deposit it into the pool and earn the staking yield however if you want to earn um, some of the lp swap fees or in the curve you can go into that pool and it's a game of which one has the highest aprs which allows people to earn like a eight or nine percent sometimes even more depending on the rates paid in eth and of course, like in the LP pool curve in ETH. <laughs> <laughs> it's still bullish. Everything is in, in terms of LSDs, very, very bullish narrative. I, I think it's going to continue. I think it's going to be a really, really strong one. No matter the narrative, whether it's in narrative or off season narrative, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I think LSDs are, is, a, is a staple. Yeah, they'll do something. <laughs> Number go <Yeah>. up. <laughs> uh, of course, as long as ETH goes up. Um, I mean, it, it's reflexive to ETH. So, Did you want uh, to speak about um, the VE33? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I kind of talked a little bit too long to even hit on uh, Conflux and the China narrative, but uh, TLDR is uh, Conflux is basically its own chain, um, and it's a CCC, CCP compliant chain, so uh, Chinese or China, yeah, Chinese Communist Party. Uh, compliant it's and you also have hong kong opening up to crypto which in my opinion it's it's bullish because in june you're going to have more liquidity coming into uh, some of those chinese tokens just don't fade the china narrative not financial advice and as long as bitcoin doesn't nuke um, but some of the ve33 uh, protocols i'm looking forward to is snack or snake whatever you want to call it layer uh, s uh, it's soul snack so not even snake it's s-n-e-k um, okay. totally snake it's on avalanche you also have flare also on avax uh, i think snake uh and flare they're both going to be interesting to see how they roll because they're going to be the first ve33 dexes rolling on there but uh snake is going to be a little bit different in that it's going to um integrate with a uh what is it a perps platform so it's going to launch a perpetual exchange so i kind of want to see how that rolls um, i mean of course this is all speculation we'll see what happens but it's coming to avax I, I see liquidity coming over there and if you had some staked equalizer or some 
new staked equalizer, you're going to get an airdrop of that. They're also going to be airdropping some other users as well. So if you've been playing around in the DeFi ecosystem, why not? Just check to see if you got an airdrop. Same thing with Flare. Flare, they give a lot of airdrops, uh, especially if you're um, pretty active in the community. So you can check if you got an airdrop on that when it launches. Um, the other one I'm looking at on Arbitrum is going to be Chronos 5. I've done a video, uh, had an AMA with uh, one of the uh, team members over there. And Chronos 5 is going to be interesting because it's going to be integrating maturity LPs, which uh, is technology from Granary Finance, or not Granary Finance, but from um, Beethoven X and uh, their little, what is it called? It's Reliquary. Uh, so Reliquary is basically where the longer you stake your LPs, the higher the yield you get. It, it um, basically gives a boost. So it's rewarding users who um, are looking to stay long-term with the protocol. And this is beneficial for um, other protocols that bribe into the VE33 DEX. And in my opinion, they, they should be able to uh, offer a premium service and should be able to get higher bribes, which is good for stakers, because this provides a way to have more predictable liquidity. Because if I'm earning... Um, uh, thousand percent APR on my LP pool instead of 500 percent because I've been there eight weeks I'm not planning on withdrawing anytime soon because I had to stink and wait eight weeks in order to 2x my APR and get the boosted yields um, so I think it'll create a more of a sticky liquidity situation and uh, we're in regards to those all of the VE33 DEXs uh, I think if we do get another run in them uh, we're going to see some of the ETFs like Taro, um, the Tarot token, T-A-R-O-T, uh, that token getting some love. Uh, I actually listened to one of their AMAs, and basically they're just trying to um, get onto a lot of these DEXs early and bribe and get some liquidity uh, in, to their token. When you have liquidity that's um, increasing for your token, you create more sinks for it, which creates buy pressure on the token to uh, chase after these yields on these DEXs. Um, FBOM is doing that as well, and same with One Ring, uh, with Ring or Ring token with One Ring Finance. So you can kind of look at those like as VE33 ETFs. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out. That sounds awesome. So anything else before we go into our last segment of uh, NFTs? Just have a couple updates. No, nah, hit us, hit us with the NFTs, man. I haven't even been keeping Very up nice. to date with that, except you just what is it, twenty five percent on your punk? So my my punk, you said? Yeah, your punk went up twenty yeah. five. Yeah. So my V one punk, the one I was t talking about, uh, I think it was like three episodes ago. I was very bullish on it based on you know the V one versus V twos. V twos are the ones that are uh, seventy plus ETH. Uh, V ones were sitting around four, four and a half. I scooped one up at four and a half, and uh, I'm up a full ETH, which is a huge win in terms of NFTs. I think that this has a lot more room to run right now. The current floor price for the V one punks is at five point six seven ETH. It's a great purchase. I'm happy with it. Um, I do see these going above a certain level, which I can't really say right now, but um, I, I I do see another. Couple X's is, is all. <laughs> I hope. Nice. Watch, me, watch me, watch me, jinx, jinx myself. Anyways, um, so that's one. The second one I want to talk about is a really, like, really, really bullish news when it comes to real world, um, you know, companies partnering up with NFT collections. You love to see it, right? Um, I don't know how I have much to talk about with the Gucci partnering up with Yugo Labs. I think that one is is kind of massive. Um, they're getting they're getting into NFTs. It's another you know you've seen these luxury brands kind of getting into NFTs. Uh, you know Dolce Gabbana, Gucci. You did see um, you know Louis Vuitton partnering up with some other um, types of NFT collections. But here is a really 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 big one: Ticketmaster. Obviously, you know what Ticketmaster is. It's basically the uh, the ticket sales and uh, distribution of you know, concert tickets, sporting events, what have you. Um, this is massive because their Ticketmaster basically is rolling out their token gated NFT integration. So this is a potentially this is a really really big deal. Um, Ticketmaster has launched a 
Uh, they're starting with Avenge Sevenfold, which is a band. Uh, I used to listen to them in the past. Pretty good, pretty good music. Um, so if you hold the, the artist's NFT, if you, you can get first access to the tickets. So potentially this is huge because it means that the true fans can get priority access, seating selection, best prices. Uh, there's no scalping, no bots, no waiting, no refreshing the screen ever. Right. So you can, you know, get botted out. Um, so this is, you know, it's going to go live for Avenged Sevenfold's upcoming tour and it's already working. Um, so a lot of the folks are very, very happy over there. They're basically starting with this one band to basically, it looks like they're trying to do like a, um, a proven product to see they're kind of like testing the market really quick. And I, you know, obviously Ticketmaster is a behemoth of a company. Um, so it's it's a, a forward positive direction for NFTs. I truly believe NFTs are going to be the future of. And it's going to Im- implement itself within several different facets of of um, you know how we go about our day to day. We all know. I mean, I hope we do. Um, Starbucks released their. I think it was like a thousand or two thousand NFTs that you can kind of get like this. Um, Hey, like I'm a I'm an exclusive member of uh, the Starbucks. You know, I have this NFT. What kind of rewards can I get? And so people are kind of testing that out. The art looks pretty nice, actually. If you ever wanted to check that out, you can just simply uh, look up and Google Starbucks NFTs online. You can basically go right. There's a direct link right to their their collection. I don't know where it's trading at this point in time, but it's an interesting play because you can potentially use it right on a day to day if you if you're a big Starbucks fan. Um, but this is a huge forward step into it. Ticketmaster, if they if they can potentially onboard this successfully, and it looks like they're they're it's it's been successful so far, then you can potentially see a lot more of these artists coming down the line and bands that are going to partner up with this, and uh, it's going to be massive. I do know as well that there's sporting uh, athletes um, that signed themselves up for hey like if i if i do a like a tennis tournament or a golf tournament um you can get a percent if you own their nfts based on their you know based on your purchase whether it's like a bronze silver or a gold nft it it, it varies with percentages on how deep they go into the tournament you can get a certain small percentage of a kickback of their prize money so that's another NFT collection wave where it's it's kind of it's smaller, right? It's like a kind of they're trying to understand the market still, and I know that there's a couple of uh, of athletes already signed up for that, and uh, so we can kind of gauge and uh, see that progress uh, over the next couple months, or potentially years, um, to kind of understand this this market a little bit more. But NFTs, there's endless there's endless opportunities to get into this space, and this is a huge, huge win for the NFT space with Ticketmaster partnering up with bands and they're doing, they're rolling this out. So what are your thoughts on that, Drake? That reminds me of the Gary V NFTs, um, V friends. I, I like, I, I think the utility NFTs, they actually make some sense to me. Whereas mm-hmm. the other ones that have like no utility, um, I, I just, I just don't get it. <laughs> but the one, <laughs> the ones with the utility, I mean, they, they make sense. Um, yeah. I think adding more utilities, especially like uh, with the, um, int- I guess you can call it uh, entry, um, entry whitelist, whatever, uh, to go to some of these games or even go to any, of, like even just like a party and whatnot. Um, I, I think that's an interesting utility and I, I think is that creates a valid use case. Um, it's almost like the CryptoPunks and Bored Apes um, I believe that's where most of the utility is in them. Um, just being able to uh, be in like a exclusive chat and going to some of the exclusive events just because you have one of those. Um, I mean, where else can you uh, meet up with other people? Like, let's say, for example, you got in early and got one of the apes uh, and you probably just minted it so you didn't have to pay anything for it. Whereas you have other people like, uh, I think, Beaver. Uh, he owns one of the um, apes, like a, bu- a bunch of famous people. They they own these apes. So, I mean, it, it allows you to have uh, access and be able to meet up with people just because you own one. So it's kind of mm-hmm. interesting. And you're actually yep. in a Discord chat with him. 
Yeah, it's kind of amazing. And I, I do know that uh, that Jay-Z owns a CryptoPunk V2, so hopefully he can buy a V1 and this thing just kind of just goes off. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be very happy with that. Yeah, tell, uh, him, tell, him, tell me if it dumps. I, I got to get one. <laughs> I will, I will. Um, sounds good. This is basically uh, it for the topics for today. Uh, Drake, do you have anything else that you want to talk about before we hit him with the one-liner? Dude, I, I always got junk to talk about, but I, I think we talked about enough today. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Let's hit him with it. All right, guys, we're in Proverbs chapter 11, verses 28. Those who trust in their riches will fall, but the righteous will thrive like a green leaf. Guys, don't trust in riches. They ain't going to do nothing for you when you die, just saying. And we're all going to die. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> Positive. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, happy trading. Talk soon. All right, see you guys.